So is it time for China to revise their system? I can barely ask with a straight face because unless there's a chance, Michelle Caruso Cabrera, CNBC contributor, is here now. And wouldn't it be amazing if this were such an opportunity, but it doesn't seem like they would want to seize on that. It seems very unlikely. What, what struck me about this is, you know, Janet Yellen is no right-wing ideologue, right? She's a Keynesian economist, a labor economist who studied at Brown and Yale. And if she's telling the Chinese government that they need to embrace more market forces, it shows you just how much they've turned their backs on all the things that they did for the previous 20 or 30 years that actually helped raise their economy and lift so many people out of poverty. Um, we, we focus a lot on what we are doing to them and what they are doing to us, but we don't often focus very much, I think, on what they are doing to themselves, sure. which is really, you know, very, very sad because, like she said, it would be so much better for the Chinese people. And I don't, that. I mean, just what Derek Scissors was commenting on last hour, he said, you know, don't, don't think economic stimulus. There's not much they can do. There's not much they're willing to do. Why? I, my understanding is that they saw what happened in the Soviet Union and they did not like what happened. With the right? more market-oriented... When, when they moved to a more market-oriented system, uh, the Communist Party lost power and they don't want to lose power. So look at what they did to Jack Ma, right? They, they saw that as similar as to the rise of the oligarchs. Mm. So Jack Ma and what they did to Alibaba. I know Alibaba's up today because the rectification process may finally be over for Ant Financial which made headlines today. But remember, Ant Financial was supposed to raise $300 billion in an IPO in 2020. And now, based on the buyback that they're going to do, it's only worth $79 billion. Exactly. I mean, what a, what a, a tragic loss of what could have been. And, and they punish a Jack Ma rather than, you know, applauding him for creating something that was enormous and amazing. Unless you're really, as the Chinese government, trying to prevent this idea that you're creating oligarchs. Right. And, and this inequality yep. that seemed to be some of the rationale behind what they were yep. doing with the education companies and whatnot. So is this the case where market forces in China are now more of a garnish, not a main course? Like they'll default to that when things are getting bad. They'll say, OK, we, we want some more market forces now. Tech, go ahead and run Ant financial. You're off the hook. But investors should expect them to default back to a clampdown? Oh, I, I think they're always going to lean on state-owned enterprises, always deciding in favor that a capital is going to go where the government decides that it should go. We've seen that. When you look at the way the Chinese market has moved, anything that's run and owned by the state, those shares have performed far better than anything that was actually fully privately held. I mean, the market investors there have really uh, made that distinction very, very clear. I mean, it used to be that uh, the Chinese market was an investing market. You were going to invest in China because there was a long-term secular growth story there. Now it's a trading market. Now you trade it based on news that comes out for whatever reason, and, and that's it. It's and now India. Place. You know, whether or not India will be a good return on capital we, remains to be seen, but that's where everyone's laying their bets now, whether they're looking to diversify a manufacturing bases or every time you read an investor survey now, it's like the number one overseed preferred market for the next 10 years. India has a lot of opportunity. Uh, can they do all the things that they, too, need to do in order to be able to seize what could be theirs, right? Their manufacturing capacity just isn't nearly the same as China for a variety of reasons. If they could do that, then you could have some real competition there in terms of diversifying supply chains that we so desperately need. Last kind of question slash comment. So Derek Scissors' view was that most likely China's going to muddle through. Um, do you see the risk that it does get a lot worse from here? Could it possibly get a lot better now that we've all kind of priced in the, the down scenario? I, I assume you're talking about the economy, not yeah. necessarily stability, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, it's impressive to achieve deflation in an incredibly inflationary world, isn't it? I mean, they've got, they've got producer price deflation. It's happening while we're all fighting inflation, and they're on the verge of consumer inflation. Yes, I think it can get worse because they've got so many structural impediments in the economy, whether it's the debt levels, whether it's, you know, demographics that are working against them, whether it's their inertia internally about being willing to allow the markets to distribute capital instead of them. I, I think it could absolutely get worse. You no, know, deflation was supposed to be a thing of the past, it, with China being almost case in point. And right. the fact that it's still, you're right, is absolutely striking Startling. in this environment. Michelle, yeah. thanks. We should talk Great more about that debt and how quickly it's gone.